This is an update in my continuing coverage of KIC 8462852 or Tabby Star for March 19th, 2018. There hasn't been much going on with this story due mainly to the star having been behind the sun for much of the winter, and thus not observable. However, the observing season recently started, and while the star appeared quiet and at near nominal brightness, today that changed in a big way. As of last night, the star is in freefall in what's already the biggest dip since those observed by Kepler in 2013, something around 4%. Now, the story has evolved since I first started covering it back in 2016. At that time, the star was a mystery with no particularly good explanation as to what was causing these dimming events, and the possibility of alien megastructures in orbit of the star was on the table. Less so today, but still not completely out of the question. Most noteworthy about the star were two very deep dips in the Kepler light curve that blocked 16 and 22% of the star's light. But there were also other lesser dips, and since observations of the star started again after the phenomenon was discovered, more lesser dips were observed extensively, and Dr. Tabitha Boyajian and colleagues released a new paper on it, links to all mentioned materials and papers in the description below. They reported that the profile of the light being blocked during those dips was consistent with dust. Now, we get an opportunity to look at what appears so far to be a major dip with multiple telescopes. With solid objects such as alien megastructures, you would expect the light to be blocked at all frequencies. With dust, it blocks some frequencies more than others, which is the case with the dips that have been observed so far. If this is not the case with a major dip, then we go back into strange territory, but there's no reason to expect it would be any different. We shall see. But what still remains a mystery is the long-term overall dimming trend of this star. Not only does it exhibit short-term dimming events and recoveries, but overall it's been getting dimmer over the last century. Why this is is open for debate. But one other development in the story concerns a red dwarf that appears to be near KSE 8462852. In a paper by Dan Clemens and colleagues, they conclude that this red dwarf is not gravitationally bound to Boyajian star which could have implications on the notion that the material blocking the light was originally disturbed from the star's Oort cloud by the Red Dwarf. Lastly, in a paper by M. Costelaz and T. Barker, they report that according to data in photographic plates from the Maria Mitchell Observatory, the star exhibited five deep dips in the period between 1922 and 1991, and they also confirmed that the long-term dimming trend is indeed occurring and that the star also saw two periods of abrupt brightening in 1967 and 1977. Intriguingly, they also found that a dip in 1980 was followed by another dip 720 days later. This is interesting because in the Kepler data there was also a 720 day period between dips, suggesting that the two events were the same object passing in front of the star. Unfortunately, there wasn't anything else to corroborate that, so it may or may not mean periodicity. So that's where it stands. We're moving closer to solving the mystery of KIC 8462852, but we're not there yet. Active crowdfunded observations continue, however, by Dr. Boyajan and her team. So if you'd like to help out, there is a link to the star's donation page in the description below. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently still worried about people launching cars into space. If that keeps up, it eventually becomes a Dyson swarm of derelict automobiles. Imagine Blar the Conqueror's surprise when a scientist inform him that they've spotted a Buick in the sun's light curve. And be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.